Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see everybody today. Smiling faces. So exciting. <laughs> I can't see your smiling faces over there on the, um, where are you on YouTube? No, Facebook. What is it? Facebook. Facebook, sorry. <laughs> Wrong media. And it will be YouTube later. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you're smiling. I know you're smiling. So happy to have everybody with us this morning. Dr. Marino will be doing our service today. We have Julie Hickox. I haven't been here in a while. So good to see you, Julie. Yay! Yay! Julie Hickox will be our uh, special musician. We have Rick Milan as our in house pianist, and he will be with us today also. So if you could please turn your phones off, we would appreciate that so I don't interrupt the service. And we are going to stand. We're going to sing our joy song together. So stand when you are able. here today and for your attention on the Facebook and uh, other media. What a blessing to be together. Sometimes physically and not so physically, but together. That's wonderful. Well, I have been starting my talks with giving thanks. Because when we look at life, we can find so many things to give thanks for, give to ordinary things, things we take for granted, like turning on the lights, which I did <clears throat> a few mornings ago and uh, nothing happened. But they're there today. And they were there within a couple of hours after I couldn't get them on. But uh, there is so much to be grateful for as we just look around ourselves, think about the ordinary things that we take for granted. The Bible certainly speaks about this. In the 107th Psalm, it says, let them give thanks. Why don't we change that just a little? Let us give thanks to the Lord's for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty 
and fills the hungry with good things. He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. Whether we know it or not, there is spiritual hunger and thirst within us. Oh, sometimes for years it does not go fed or given anything to allow, uh, uh, not allow it to, to express. Nonetheless, it is within us because that is part of our being. And God is always providing, do we reach out for this? Not always, no. But the hunger and thirst is there within us, whether we know it or not. And you here today, and you on the internet, and infinite numbers are seeking and hopefully finding in the finding, there is food for the soul. So, eat and drink, imbibe, <laughs> absorb, and rejoice. Rejoice. Because God is always, in one manner or another, providing there was reasons for us to give thanks. <clears throat> okay. Shall we now um, say our statement of being? These, these are the precepts that we try to bring into life all the time. We try to keep them in mind. That is all. Both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God and am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance.
Thank you, Julie. That's lovely. Thank you. Well, um, it's now time for that space <clears throat> of peace in our in our service of going within of meditation of relaxation and we allow it to unfold starting with the physical closing our eyes and checking the, the body temple our faces, our jaws, shoulders, let go. Let them all relax. Arms and hands. And moving down the chest, the stomach. The buttocks, legs, and feet. Release. Let go, relax. Because it is the prerequisite of mental stillness. The body is not in quietude, the mind cannot become quiet, but right now, right now, it is becoming quiet, peaceful, still, so still. And in this stillness, we can come to feel a dimension of ourselves that is not readily available to us, not in the busyness and the stress and the pull and push of life. But here, now, we relax so deeply within it. The dimension of ourselves that is eternal. It supports every other part of ourselves. That is our ground. God within. One with us. surrounding us and supporting us, <clears throat> meeting our needs in ways we cannot even imagine, but always with love. Lean back into that love. Allow it to fill you consciously. Draw from it a feeling of yes. Yes, it will be all right. Whatever concerns me. know that God is involved and all will be well. In the 
next 90 seconds. Let us give it over to God, give it over to love and power and wisdom and all good. To right action and infinite resources to solutions starting right now. to me, all ye who are heavy laden, anyone who carries problems, challenges, fears, negative anticipation, come unto me and rest, knowing that infinite good is right where you are where that issue is. And all is well. All is unfolding in an order and a harmony that we wouldn't have expected. But with God, all things, all things are possible. And this day we give thanks. Amen. And now, <clears throat> shall we say this beautiful prayer? Translated into more modern language by Rocco Erico. Straight from the mouth of Jesus, these are his words. Our Father, who is everywhere, your name is sacred, your kingdom is come, your will is throughout the earth, even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our needful bread from day to day. And you forgive us our offenses, even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not enter into materialism, but you separate us from error, because yours are the kingdom, the power, the song and praise from all ages, throughout all ages, sealed in faith, trust, and truth. And amen. Well, today I'm going to be talking about where is God? And that's one of those duh questions because I stand up here every time I'm in the pulpit and I say, 
God is omnipresent, omnipresent over and over. So why am I asking? Why, why am I posing this question? Well, I'm going to return to this in just a, a couple of minutes, but I wanted to go back to something that I talked about the last time I spoke. And it was an experience that Nona Brooks had when she and her sisters were doing all sorts of healing treatments in Denver, and they were teaching divine science. They had been influenced by the founder of divine science, which was Melinda Kramer, of course. But this happened before she went out to California for his or her ministerial training and to be ordained into the divine science ministry. So, in divine science, we believe that our soul, which, which it says it very clearly in Genesis, is the image and likeness of God. And that means that we already have the full complement of all God's qualities within us. They're there. We don't have to wish for them or work for them. They are there, but they need to be expressed consciously. Well, in our innermost being, while well, we are all of this and so much more than we suspect, uh, those qualities like goodness and wisdom, understanding, power, joy, life, truth, knowledge, and especially love, all these beautiful divine qualities are ours now, here. Well, Nona decided that she, what she needed to do is consciously try to work on and express these qualities through her day and in her interactions with people. They were so important, especially in her healing work. And so one of those days long ago, uh, she was pedaling her bicycle down to the downtown office where she was going to teach a class. And she started glancing at all the people around her on the street and uh, saying silently to herself, I love you. She would express love as much as she could that day. I love you and I love you and you and you and I love you and you and you and you. As she rode along, silently saying this to herself, on and on, really trying to evoke a feeling even with, with, that, with those thoughts as she glanced around her and rode her bike downtown. And you remember, as I said before, <clears throat> she got down to the office and found Mrs. Mack waiting for her. Mrs. Mack was a thorn in her side. She couldn't understand why she kept, she kept showing up time after time, but she would show up at these mediums, meetings, and, and um, she would stand up in the middle of a, a talk, and, and she would object, or she would question sometimes. She'd criticize Nona while she was right there speaking. And Nona always felt so uncomfortable when this woman was there because she was unpredictable. You didn't, you just never knew when she was going to leap to her feet and say, you know, A, B, C, D, or whatever. It could be very critical. Well, it would be half an hour yet before the class began to gather. Maybe she could get rid of Mrs. Mack for whatever reason she was there before the class started. And then it occurred to Nona that she had been saying, I love you, and I love you, and I love you, and, I, and you, and you, and you, to all these total strangers. And maybe, just maybe she needed to say it to this unlovable, annoying woman. And so she started repeating to herself, I love you, I love you, I love you, silently, of course, within herself. I love you, I love you, to this really difficult woman. 
And of course, there was a part of her that was objecting. Uh, no, no, you don't love her. There's no way you could love that woman. But um, she kept saying it anyway. I love you, I love you, I love you. But she kept on, kept on. And when the class started half an hour later, she was still saying it as Mrs. Mack rattled on and on, you know, about whatever she was thinking about. Mrs. Mack stayed for the class. But uncharacteristically, she didn't interrupt. At the end of the class, Mrs. Mack did stand up. But this time, to everybody's amazement, she apologized to Nona and the whole class for all the disparaging remarks that she had previously made. She took all of them back, all. For the first time, she said, I understood what Nona and her sisters were trying to do, and she declared emphatically that they were doing a splendid work, a splendid work. Well, Nona was floored. She was astounded, and she thought, oh my goodness, could it possibly be that even speaking love mechanically at first, even if you don't mean it at first, just doing it, just doing it and doing it can become so powerful. And she and many others that she described this to found that making the effort to express love, <laughs> even when you didn't mean it at first, it just brought remarkable results. Why? Why should it make any difference? Say it inside yourself. Just making the effort to say those words silently, even, even if you don't feel them at first, gradually your feelings, as well as that subtle energy that goes between people who are interacting, begins to change. Your body language, your unconscious facial expressions, the words you choose even, they're going to change. There's going to be a subtle change. And that will unconsciously affect the other person in a positive way. Because what's coming out of you is positive. Love heals. Love transforms. It's such a wonderful way to harmonize any and every relationship in your life, especially the difficult ones, especially those. Now, I'm going to retreat again a little bit. I'm going back to the title of the talk. <laughs> Where is God? And the answer, as usual, is God is omnipresent. Many, many years ago, 60 years ago, gosh, uh, I had never heard of divine science, didn't know anything, didn't know it existed. But I became acquainted with it when a friend of mine invited me to her home to take part in just a, a group of people reading a book. And it happened to be divine science, its principle and practice. His friend had run into it and found it uh, helpful, and so she got some friends together, and Emma made the most delicious little ginger cookies, and she would serve tea or coffee and cookies during the meeting, and that was always to be looked forward to. But I found, uh, after a um, um, meeting or so, I found the ideas really interesting. Challenging a little bit, but very, very interesting. But during the second meeting, I read the words that said that God is within us as well as around us, omnipresent. <clears throat> I'd never heard that before. It had never occurred to me that God didn't stop at my skin. God was everywhere. But that included within me. 
a brand new idea. And everything got, everything got really kind of quiet inside me for a few moments. I, I stopped hearing what the people were talking about. And, and I just began internally processing this idea. I guess that might have been the moment when I became a divine scientist, because it was unique in my experience. When I understood that God was in everything, everywhere, in everyone, in everything, especially within me and everyone else, as well as outside of me in everything. Where is God? Omnipresent. But have you, have you ever questioned if he is where he is? For you, for you, for instance, when you pray or you meditate, where does your attention go? Do your prayers go um, maybe to heaven, wherever that is? Or are your thoughts just directed somewhere out there, you know, wherever? God's there somewhere, everywhere. Oh, no particular place, but you're just praying out there somewhere. And you know, I used to pray to the whole universe. <laughs> but um, I don't do that very much anymore. So I would like you just, just for a few moments to think about just that. Where do you Focus your prayers, especially. Do they stay within you, or do you think about them just going out in every direction? I'm going to give you just a few moments. Think, think about this. Where, where do those prayers, where are they focused? In what direction? I'm going to give you just a few moments just to ask your, yourself that question and, uh, and find an answer. Okay, got an idea, maybe? Something suggests itself to you. What I would like to do is you're trying an experiment. Try mm -hmm. directing your meditation, your prayers, within yourself. Speak to the dimension of God that is within you, that <coughs> provides you with life and breath and understanding and existence. Speak to God in you, because God is within. You, there's a different feeling that goes along when you do that. Directing your attention, your prayers, to say, oh, maybe, maybe the middle of your chest, where your heart is. Or maybe in, up here in your forehead with the third eye, as they say. Direct the prayers there, in the, within you. Or maybe, maybe in your abdomen, somewhere in the middle of your body. Aim, aim your, your prayers there. Internalize them to your physical body. Or wherever it feels right to you. Focus on God within you physically. And that, that has 
was an amazing, for me, a, a really remarkable way of making that presence feel more immediate, more intimate. I, I want to encourage you to try that as an experiment. This week, when you pray, whether that's daily or once in a while when you think of it, it doesn't matter. Focus it inside, because God is within. <clears throat> well, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to change another direction. There, just for a little while, because I'm, I'll bring it all back together at the end, I promise. <laughs> in our church, we characterize God in a very, very different way than many other church denominations. There are lots and lots of successful churches. Their, their parking lots are absolutely filled on Sunday morning. And they say that God judges us. God will get even with us. God is angry. God is angry and he punishes us by having us suffer forever because of our mistakes. We are basically sinful. That's what they, they tell their congregations week after week after. And on the other hand, we define God in such a drastically different way. We affirm that God is love. He never judges us. We judge ourselves, yes, but God does not judge us at all. He loves us unconditionally. Unconditionally, no, no conditions. God never punishes us for our mistakes. We punish ourselves. When we transgress the great spiritual law of as you sow, so shall you reap, whatever we do, we are actually doing to ourselves, either immediately or a little way down the road, that... Um, this law of sowing and reaping is designed not to punish us, but allow us to learn, to teach us the value and the wisdom of speaking and behaving to other people as we want other people to speak to us, to, to interact with us. If that great law of sowing and reaping giving to others as you would wish others to give to you. If, if that becomes the guiding idea, the precept that we, we automatically follow in interacting with other people, we are guaranteed, guaranteed a life that is more peaceful, <coughs> inward and inwardly and outwardly more successful, more fulfilling, more loving than any other way of living. Last Friday, we had an IONS meeting. That's the, the International Association of Near-Death Studies. And the speaker had stopped believing in God when she was a, a teenager. She couldn't see any reason to believe that there was such a thing as a God. She was a scientist. And that was her training all through school. And she became an atheist. She didn't believe in that. For 40 years or more, she thought that was a bunch of hooey, anything spiritual. Stupid. Unfortunately, while riding her bike one day, she was hit by a truck. And she had a, a near-death experience while being operated on for the, uh, the multiple injuries, uh, countless injuries that she had in her body. And in this near-death experience, she found herself in the most beautiful meadow surrounded with mountains. But she was filled, surrounded with a peace and a love that she had never experienced in her life, never. She never wanted to leave that, that wonderful feeling. And she thought to herself, how come I'm here? I don't believe in you. 
I don't believe that all this could be for me because I'm an atheist. And what she got back were the words, you are my child, welcome home. Welcome home. The divine presence had accepted her back without hesitation, with complete love and compassion, despite all those many, many years of denial about anything spiritual. Actually, speaking out vociferously about the stupidity of it. Her profound experience underscores that God is love. Divine science has a belief system that says that God is unconditional love. Unconditional. He doesn't punish us. He doesn't judge us. Just knowing the truth of God is so free. It's so enabling. We live without fear of God. And believe me, there are many people who do fear God. But it's easy to leave those beautiful thoughts as a strictly mental construct. It's, it's positive. It's helpful. But it could be so much more. I don't know about you, but I want, I want the experience of God without a medical emergency. I want that. <coughs> God is love. That's a beautiful thought. It's a beautiful belief. But how much better would it be to feel, to be cradled, warmed, uplifted with that perfect love. And that experience is attainable. Many people have had it who have not had a medical emergency. How? How? You remember what Nona Brooks did? Remember? She just thought, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And something fundamental changed in her and in that woman who had been so antagonistic. What if, what if we start saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, to God within us? What if we start doing that? Even if we say it just kind of automatically, just words, you know, first. But after a while, saying that those words begin to generate a new, more positive feeling. Gradually, the feelings creep into the words. We, be can, we begin connecting more and more with God indwelling us and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's easy, especially when we find good things happening to us and, and we find good things going on in our lives. When we notice perhaps the beauty of, of a sunset or the flowers that are growing in our yard. Or, oh, even someone's beautifully mowed lawn. Beautiful. Looks so good. All those things around us. When something, something occurs that just evokes gratitude, oh, thank heavens, X, Y, Z happened. Oh, I'm so glad X, Y, Z is better and feeling better. Someone we love. Or they escaped a really tough situation. Saying, I love you to God within and gradually feeling it because it's inevitable. You say it, say it, and, and you feel it. That could well breach whatever barriers are within us that could permit a life 
changing experience of God that could become an enduring relationship, an ongoing feeling of love and support and peace, assurance, good, within and without. Is it worth a try? Is it worth a try? Like, you're sitting in your car, you're waiting for the light to change, and nothing's happening, of course. And you start saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Or you're sipping your morning coffee, or you're just sitting in your easy chair and looking at the wall on the other side. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Is it worth reaching within you when somebody's late? You're waiting for them. I love you, I love you, I love you. Is it worth trying to bring about that incomparable experience of knowing God yourself? Feeling, feeling. Why not try the experiment this week? Why not try it? I love you. I love you. See what happens. Let's go with you. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. But consciously, intellectually, I know that you love me unconditionally. And always will. No matter, no matter what mistakes I might make, no matter how I might forget you, pay no attention to that part of myself, you are always, always, always there within. Within me. Thank you that it is so.
Thank you, Julie. <laughs> that was lovely. Well, now is the time of our service when we uh, we give thanks. We give thanks for all the gifts that we receive in life and the, the gift of life itself. So shall we bless the gifts that we receive and that we give. Today, I acknowledge God, omnipresent, as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept God's will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I am open to all the thoughts of lack and limitation, and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. I believe we're going to have some announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Julie. This has been a long time since you've been here, so it's a pleasure to have you back with me today. So we will be getting you back more often. I know you're a busy woman. You're very busy, but we're very glad to have you here. So thank you. The flowers today are sponsored by Pam, and they were designed by Pam. They are beautiful, and she says for everybody to take them, she wants to inspire joy and happiness. Well, thank you. So as you do. So <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, not much going on right now. A Wednesday night is back to our coffee night. We'll be back on Wednesday night. We changed it last week uh, uh, to Thursday, but we're back on Wednesday night. And we're going to have book reading this week. Uh, I guess you are in town. Okay. So book reading will be at 5. And everybody's invited to all the good things. So, so please feel free to come out. Uh, the board members that are here, please, after a service, I need to talk to you for about five minutes if you don't mind. And uh, as I announced last week, uh, Maria is. Um, She's having a birthday here sometime in the future, and she has requested that if anybody that normally gives her a present or wants to give her a present, instead of doing that, that they please donate some money to the church. So we have a box. This <laughs> so uh, anyhow, we'll have the box out, and we're going to leave it out to the end of the month. So if you uh, want to do, um, also, well, not only for her birthday, but she has been uh, serving this church for 51, 52 years, and so we're very, very grateful for that. So, if anybody wants to make a donation to the church, or if you just want to put cash in there or whatever, there's also some little notepads here. If you want to write a note to her and say you donated money, or if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but the boxes here will be in the church and in the annex uh, until the end of the month. So, we thank you in advance for doing that. But that's was her request. She said she's trying to to get rid of stuff in her house. So she <laughs> said, donate something to the church. So thank you, Maria, for doing that. So other than that, unless do you have anything, Maria? Not that I can think of at this point. Is anything that I've missed? Okay. All right, then, let's go eat some dessert. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. Yes, ma'am. Um, we still have left. Our, our prayer of protection. Now, <clears throat> these are areas of the world that are experiencing uh, wars, uh, uprisings, etc. There are two to that list. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just about. Oh, yes, yeah. it's a terrible, terrible earthquake in Morocco that's claimed thousands and thousands of lives. Um, people who are suffering, the family of man is certainly in not a good space because many are thirsty, hungry, in pain, fearful, burdened. So shall we say this, this prayer um, lovingly and Meaningfully, shall we get the prayer protection? Thank you. 
as we, we say it, we think of the whole family of man. There are such needs in every corner of the world. We say it for all of these people, our brothers and sisters. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. The mind of God guides you. The power of God abides in you. The strength of God renews you. Wherever you are, God is and all is well. And finally, we spend a little time blessing our own country because certainly at this time there has been such well, such a rending of connections between people. This is, it, it is sad, it is harmful, and it is an opportunity. So in the next 60 or so seconds, I invite you to pray for the people of our country. The prejudice stops. The hatred of others stops. That fault finding, criticism, anger toward one another ceases and is healed and becomes acceptance and respect, honoring the other, no matter how different, blessing them and ourselves.